Welcome to another episode of my new English YouTube channel. First of all, I gotta apologize to my non-German speaking friends for not hearing from me in a while. But I am sure you know how it is. The day only has 24 hours and I have been juggling my online job, fulfilling orders and taking care of my German speaking channel. By the way, I also invite you to subscribe to my German channel if you want to enjoy all the perks of being a member and support me. I would be incredibly grateful. It would be create a fantastic win-win situation for all of us. So let's join forces and make this journey even more amazing together. In this video, I will talk about all settings of the Solax X3 hybrid inverter. We won't just cover the basic settings, but also the advanced ones. After watching this episode, many things that used to be a mystery will become clear to you. This episode will aid you in better understanding your system, enabling you to utilize it more efficiently and adjust everything according to your specific requirements. The menu item I will talk about are part of the latest firmware version. I highly recommend updating your system to the latest version. You can find instructions on how to do that in a previous video on updates as well in the video description below. Dear friends, esteemed ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned until the end. As always, it's going to be exciting. Take a few moments during the intro to scroll down, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, activate the little bell. I am Alex and now it's time to dive into today's content. What we see here are the performance data of my system. On the overview page, we click on the inverter in the center, then on the gear icon. And that brings us directly to the settings page. First of all, I want to talk about the timeout error. I am sure many of you have experienced it before. You want to change a setting and suddenly you get a timeout error message. You are like, holy moly, what's going on? The thing is, the inverter might be on standby under certain conditions. It's always on standby when the solar modules are not producing power and the battery has already reached his minimum state of charge. You can wake up the inverter by saving the on setting again. This is a trick that allows you to make adjustments in case the device is on standby. The work modes. I will talk about it in a separate episode otherwise. This one will become too long. I recommend using the self-use mode. To actually access the settings, we need to enter a password here. For the basic settings, we need to enter four zeros. However, if we enter 2014, we can access both the basic and the advanced settings. Let's start with the basic settings. Date, time, language. There isn't much to explain, it's self-explanatory for sure. EPS mode. When the system is in EPS mode, it beeps incessantly, which can drive you crazy. Here you can disable this terrible peeping sound. In the following menu items, we can adjust the parameters of each work mode. Currently, we have set the operation mode to self-use and here we can define how much we allow the discharge of the battery and whether we want to charge the battery from the grid or not. Under normal circumstances, we don't charge the battery from the grid, except in case of an anticipated blackout or when there is free electricity due to dynamic electricity tariffs. We have similar settings for the operation mode, fed in priority and backup mode. But as mentioned before, I will talk about it in a separate episode. And now we come to a very important topic that is often misunderstood. It's about the charging and discharging times of the power storage. 
we can define here a time window for forced charging. I refer to this time window as the active charging time. It's important to know that during an active charging time, the battery is only charged and not discharged. However, the battery will still be charged during a not active charging time if there is excess energy from the sun, but with the difference that we can also draw energy from the battery when we need it. In general, we want the battery to have the ability to be charged for 24 hours a day while also being able to discharge energy for 24 hours a day. For this reason, I always choose the following settings because based on experience, the pre-programmed settings often lead to issues. Often, setting the non-active charging time to zero minutes doesn't work correctly. That's why I choose to set it to one minute specifically from 12 p.m. to 12.01 p.m. I can live with my battery non-discharging power to one minute to this daytime. And in reference to that, I set the overall settings, which is the time window for discharging the battery to 23 hours and 59 minutes. I promise you, with these settings, you will never have any issues with charging and discharging your power storage. The next menu item is dry contact settings or potential free contact. It's a very comprehensive topic and I will talk about it in a further specifically episode. And last but not least, you can here in the basic settings set your user password for this area. And now let's continue with the advanced settings. To many menu item, I will make separate videos as they are for specific extensive functions. Therefore, I will only briefly touch on them to give you an overview of all. First, we have the menu item safety. Here you set the country settings for the grid parameters. What you need to configure here depends on the country in which you operate the system. You can also get this information from your grid operator. Next, we have the grid voltage parameters where you can change the settings related to the previous menu item, which are pre-configured. However, in most cases, you should not make any changes there. At the charger, which is the next menu item, you can define the charging and discharging currents. I have set it to 25 amperes out of the possible 30 amperes to preserve the battery a bit. Additionally, you can set here how much the battery should be charged. With lithium iron phosphate batteries, it should not be a problem to charge them up to 100%. However, as you can see, I have still set it to only 90%. Under export control, you can adjust how much power measured in watt is allowed to flow into the public grid. You can adjust the settings continuously, starting from zero up to the maximum capacity of the Solex inverter or all your power generators. It's important to know that the Solex inverter cannot only regulate itself but also monitor the production of external power generators if properly installed. Meter CD settings. Here you can choose whether you have a smart meter installed or if you are using CT clamps. For the main measurement, I will create a separate video on CD and smart meters because it's also a very comprehensive topic. In that video, I will also talk about the menu item external inverter. This function should be typically be disabled. Furthermore, there is an exciting new feature called installation check. This function can can correct the CD clamp orientation in the software if they are swapped or wrongly connected. GMPPT stands for Global Maximum PowerPoint Tracking. 
you can make settings related to shadow management. However, I am not a big fan from it. I will explain why in a separate video detected to this topic. With the function modebus, you define the communication parameters for the Solex X3 hybrid inverter when it interacts with other smart devices. For instance, it can communicate with a compatible wall box, a power controller for a surplus uh, control or the new adapter box generation 2. These are all topics for which I will create separate videos because there's so much to discuss and the Solex X3 hybrid inverter offers incredible possibilities. It's impossible to talk about everything in one video because it would be too overwhelming for you. External ATS automatic transfer switch. Here you need to define whether you are using the internal grid separation of the inverter or the Solex X3 EPS box or a handy switch to disconnect the public grid from your home network, network in case of a power outage. The power factor function is related to the grid parameters just like the next menu item BU function. In most cases, you don't need to change the pre-configured parameters. The next function I want to talk about is the parallel settings. You should know that you can connect up to 10 Solex X3 hybrid inverters in parallel. The advantage of this is that all devices are involved in the EPS mode. However, there are many things to consider and numerous parameters to set up in parallel installation, which can be found under this menu item. But don't worry, I will create detailed videos on all of these topics. Fast unbalanced is a function that allows the inverter to distribute the generated energy not only symmetrically but also asymmetrically across the three phases. The inverter is highly capable of handling unbalanced loads and this function can be advantageous in grid operation. I will cover this topic in more detail in a separate video as well. In the EPS setting, you define the frequency at which the inverter should output the power in EPS mode. Additionally, you set the minimum state of charge of your battery at which the EPS output should stop supplying power. Below that threshold, the EPS output will be disabled. Below this, you set the SOC level at which the EPS output should be reactivated after being recharged by the sun. External generator is a topic for which I made a very long video on my German YouTube channel. Don't worry, I will also do it in English. In regular operation, this function is disabled. It involves integrating a power generator into our photovoltaic system. The hot standby settings are usually enabled. However, I always deactivate this function because it causes the battery to start supplying power at a lower threshold as soon as there is no more sunlight. By disabling this function, we can minimize the grid consumption. Other methods to further grid consumption will also be discussed in future videos. The extend battery function can be activated when we plan to expand our power storage. You should know that existing batteries should have a lower state of charge than new ones. This function brings through forced charging slash discharging the existing batteries to an optimal state of charge for connecting new batteries. With the backgrid BS function you define the balancing of the batteries. In regular operation, this function is disabled. When the, when the function is set to inverter, approximately 40 watts are drawn from the grid. And when it's set to grid, approximately 40 watts are fed in into the public grid. 
The PV Connection Function controls the operation of the two MPP trackers. It should always be set to multi. When the function is set to COM, the VV inputs will be connected in parallel. The next function is related to the Solax wall box. In this function, we define whether we allow charging our electro vehicle from the home battery storage or not. The function is relevant to certain work modes of the wall box. The name of this function is battery charge electro vehicle. Slowly, I have a knot in my tank, but we have reached the final menu items, which are self-explanatory. I believe I don't need to talk about it and I am so sorry for my bad English and I really hope you could understand me. By the way, if you don't have all the menu items I have talked about, let me update your firmware and become a member of my German YouTube channel. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was more or less the settings of the Solax X3 Hybrid Inverter. I hope I've earned a like from you. Please share your thoughts about this episode in the comment section below. Share this video with your friends, as only then it will be carried out into the wide world by the YouTube algorithm. I now wish you all a wonderful time and we will see each other again in the next episode.